just want to warmly welcome everybody to uh, the service of the Word at St. Paul Lutheran Church, East Lansing. This is the second Sunday in Pentecost for June 11, 2023. Though Jesus was a devout Jew who practiced his faith, he was criticized for eating with tax collectors and sinners, the religious non-observant. Jesus criticizes the self-righteous and reminds us that mercy is to be at the heart of our religious practices. God continues to be made known in those on the margins of society, like Matthew the tax collector and the hemorrhaging woman. As we gather each Lord's day, we receive the healing that makes us well and sends us forth to be signs of God's mercy for the world. So let us gather together as the Holy Spirit gathers us together as the people of God. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who greets us in this and every season, whose word never fails, whose promise is sure. Amen. Let's confess our sin in the presence of God and of our neighbors. Most of God, we confess that we have sinned, we have cursed our community, we have squandered your blessings, we have hoarded your bounty. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us mercy. Righteous God, we confess that we have sinned, we have failed to be honest, we have lacked the courage to speak, we have spoken falsely. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. God is a cup of cold water. When we thirst, God offers boundless grace. We fail. Claim the gift of God's mercy. You are free and forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.
Señor, Señor, ten piedad, ten piedad de nosotros. Señor, Señor, ten piedad, ten piedad de nosotros. Cristo, Cristo, ten piedad, ten piedad de nosotros. Cristo, Cristo, ten piedad, ten piedad de nosotros. Lord, have mercy on us, oh Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy on us, oh Lord. Mercy on us, O oh Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy on us, O oh Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy on us, O oh Lord, have mercy. on us, O oh Lord, have mercy. O oh God, you're the source of life and the ground of our being. By the power of your Spirit, bring healing to this wounded world and raise us to new life in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior, Lord. Amen. Now God speaks to us in Scripture, preaching, and song. <clears throat> the first reading is from Hosea, Hosea chapter 5. I will return again to my place until they acknowledge their guilt and seek my face. In their distress, they will beg my favor. Come, let us return to the Lord, for it is he who has torn and he will heal us. He has struck down and he will bind us up. After two days, he will receive us, revive us. On the third day, he will raise us up, that we will live before him. Let us know, let us press on to know the Lord. His appearing is as sure as the dawn. He will come to us like the showers, like the spring rains that water the earth. What shall I do with you, O Ephraim? What shall I do with you, O Judah? Your love is like a morning cloud, like the dew that goes away early. Therefore, I have hewn them by the prophets. I have killed them by the words of my mouth, and my judgment goes forth as the light. For I desire steadfast love and not sacrifice, the knowledge of God rather than burnt offerings. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Let's share Psalm 50 responsibly. Listen, my God, and listen, my people, and I will speak. Israel, I will bear witness against you, for I am God, your God. I do not accuse you because of your steadfast. Your burnt offerings are always before me. I will not accept a calf from your stalls, nor goats from your pens. For all, all the wild, wild animals, animals of the forest are mine, the cattle on a thousand, thousand hills. hills. I know every bird of the mountains and every creature of the fields are mine. If, if I, I were hungry, hungry I, I would not tell you, you for, for the, the whole, whole world is mine and all, all that is in it. Do you think I eat the flesh of bulls or drink the blood of goats? Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving, and make good your vows to the Most High. Call upon me in the day of trouble, and I will deliver you, and you shall honor me. The second lesson is from Romans chapter 4. For the promise 
that he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or to his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. If it is the adherents of the law who are to be the heirs, faith is null and the promise is void. For the law brings wrath, but where there is no law, neither is there violation. For this reason, it depends on faith, in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his descendants, not only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham, for he is the father of all of us, as it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. In the presence of the God in whom he believed, who lives, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. Hoping against hope, he believed that he would become the father of many nations, According to what he was said, so numerous shall your descendants be. He did not weaken in faith when he considered his own body, which was already as good as dead, for he was about a hundred years old, or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb. No distrust made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God being fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. Therefore, his faith was reckoned to him as righteousness. Now the words, it was reckoned to him, were written not for his sake alone, but for ours also. It will be reckoned to us who believe in him, who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was handed over to death for our trans. Uh, trespasses, and was raised for our justification. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Today's Holy Gospel is according to Matthew, the ninth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus demonstrates God's mercy and peace, accepting the unacceptable and curing the incurable, even the dead receive new life. As Jesus was walking along, he saw a man called Matthew sitting at the tax booth. And he said to him, follow me. And he got up and followed him. And he sat at dinner in the house. Many tax collectors and sinners came and were sitting with him and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? And when he heard this, he said, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice, for I've come to call not the righteous, but the sinners. While well, he was saying these things to them, suddenly a leader of the synagogue came in and knelt before him saying, my daughter has just died. But come and lay your hand on her, and she will live. And Jesus got up and followed him with his disciples. Then suddenly a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years came behind him and touched the fringe of his cloak. For she said to herself, if only I touch his cloak, I will be made well. Jesus turned and seeing her, he said, take Heart, daughter, your faith has made you well. And instantly the woman was made well. When Jesus came to the leader's house and saw the flute player in the crowd making a commotion, he said, Go away, for the girl is not dead but sleeping. And they laughed at him. When the crowd had been put outside, he went in and took her by the hand, and the girl got up. And the report of this spread throughout the district. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise you, O Christ. Well, grace and peace and mercy and of the power from God our Father and Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus sets an example about how all people just deserve respect and dignity. We have Matthew, the, the despised tax collector. 
we have the hemorrhaging woman who's been hemorrhaging for 12 years and certainly is the other. And then, of course, we have the synagogue, synagogue leader's daughter who has died. In all cases, Jesus uses God's mercy and power and accepts the unacceptable and the incurable, and even to the point of bringing death to new life. This is where our hope comes from. Our hope comes from God, mercy, and power. And our hope is not just for you and I, but it's for all people, even though who feel hopeless, who can't really see the power of God. Consider the broad spectrum of people that Jesus called to follow him. Originally, Jesus calls fishermen to follow him. Some were fishing, some were doing nets. And what do they do? They dropped everything and followed him immediately because he had called on them to abandon what they were doing and to follow him. They don't take time to have a list and here's the pros, here's the con, let's talk about it, go home, we'll sit down at the dinner table, we'll talk about it, figure out. No, they dropped everything to follow him. He told Matthew to follow him, and Matthew simply dropped everything and followed him. You see, when he did that, he was leaving his tax booth behind. This was his way of making a living. Some of it was probably very questionable, which I'll discuss in a minute, but he left his way of living to go follow God. And if you look at all the people God called throughout the ages, when people were called to something, they were coming from something. In the case of Matthew, though, he left behind the tax booth and the sin and sinfulness that represented it because the tax collectors were known to cheat people. They would go ahead and you're supposed to tax at a certain rate. In Matthew's case, for the fishermen, they could say, okay, how many fish did you catch? Okay, this is how we figured out this is how much you owed. Ask him for more than what he would turn over to the Romans because of what the Romans, the oppressors, the occupiers, what they had needed. But this is the same as true for all, all disciples. When Jesus calls the disciples to discipleship, he's asking again to give up something. The reality is they don't choose Jesus, but Jesus chooses them. When we follow Jesus, we give up things. We give up our time. We give up our treasures. We are not able to do certain things because we're busy in helping others, but we give up things. We give up things to follow Jesus. And to follow Jesus so is a simple act of obedience. With us, we are called to the baptismal font to follow Jesus. We don't claim Jesus, but Jesus claims each and every one of us. He claims you, and we are to follow him because we're called to follow. But you see, it's not how Jesus sees us that makes us worthy, but rather what Jesus gives us when we obey his command. Think about the hopelessness they had. Here, Matthew, is he's outside of society. I mentioned he was despised. He was a tax collector. They said like shepherds and murderers were at a higher level than tax collectors. But Matthew, he was immediately obedient to Christ and dropped what he had and followed because he now has hope. So then Jesus went with him and the disciples and they had dinner. And here he ate with tax collectors and, hold your breath, sinners. Of course, what we know is we're all sinners. We all fall short of the glory of God. But to the religious leaders in that day, that wasn't the way. They were the righteous ones. It was the other people who were the sinners. And that's where you get into the dignity and respect of all people. Because they say, look at us, we're righteous. Look at those people over there. The only problem is when you look at those people over there, you're going to see Jesus standing with them because Jesus is there with the people over there.
And when they look and say, how about those people? Well, Jesus is with us. But these religious leaders, they're flabbergasted. Why does your rabbi eat with tax collectors and sinners? They ask. Jesus said, well, the sick do not need healing, but those who are sick do. He instructs them to go and learn what this means and state he desires mercy, not sacrifice. It's about God's mercy. Because this is how Matthew has hope is through God's mercy. And he's come to call not the righteous, but the sinners. What Jesus is doing here is he's prompting hospitality, hospitality for all people. This is what we're called to do, to invite and to welcome and be hospitable to all people. Even people that don't look like us, think like us, people maybe we don't like, people that scare us, but we're called to be hospitable to all people. You see, no self-respecting Jewish man at that time would eat with sinners and tax collectors. But Jesus did. The scandalous hospitality heals social disruptions which have caused people to be pushed to the margin of society. When you start to do that, you have the in crowd. Remember that song in high school? I'm in with the in crowd. I go where the in crowd goes. Well, the reality is, is they're really fooling themselves because there really is no in crowd because under God, through Christ, we're all part of the in crowd and follow Christ. Matthew tells the two healing stories, one of the daughter synagogue leader. So the synagogue leader is a prominent member of society. He asked Jesus to just lay his hand on her and she would live. And of course, the issue with that is to Jewish people laying on the hand of someone who has died, that's, that's, that breaks the purity laws. You don't, we don't touch people who are dead because they're unpure. And here he's on his way to do this, and now comes a hemorrhaging woman. She's been hemorrhaging for 12 years. Can you imagine? And she's the other. She's on the margin of society. She cannot participate. She cannot participate in society. She can't worship because she's impure and she can't work. She's shunned and she definitely is on the margin. She's other. But she says, if I simply touch his cloak, I will get better. And he told her when he felt his cloak was touched, the fringe of his cloak even, that her faith had made her well. Can you imagine that? Somebody touches his fringe of his cloak and he could feel it. He could feel the power coming from him to her and to make her well. This is the power of God. We don't always remember the power of God. The power of God which we use for God's mercy. His hospitality is not only for sinners and tax collectors, actually, but it's for everyone. But you see, Jesus is treating them equally with the, he's treating everybody equally, even the people on the margins, they have hope. The interesting thing with the hemorrhaging woman, he said, daughter, he called her daughter. See, she's outside of the family, society, but now he calls her daughter, bringing her back in when he said her faith would make her well. And ultimately, isn't that what it gets down to? Martin Luther in Romans pointed out that with true faith in Christ, we're open to God's unconditional grace, and in front of God, we will be held righteous. It's based on faith. Through that faith, through the power of God, that is our hope. So imagine the power of Jesus when he could heal someone just by them touching his cloak. And now he finally makes it to the daughter of the synagogue leader, the daughter who has died. And here you have people, flute out, there's always a gathering of people. 
mourning for the deceased. And he told him, go away, go away. She's only sleeping. And what they do, they laughed at him. They know that she's not sleeping. They've seen it. She's dead. So he, he went in and he touched her hand, again, touching a dead body. The impure, but she got up. You see, the faith of the synagogue leader is touch my daughter and she will be healed. The faith of the hemorrhaging woman is, I will touch his cloak. And with Matthew, he followed Jesus because that's where he saw, that's where he saw his future. So the daughter, her importance was she was the daughter of a synagogue leader. Then you have the hemorrhaging woman of nobody, not even given a name. Talked about physical symptoms, a hemorrhaging woman. That, that's what he called her. Certainly not register on the register of the, the, uh, the rich and famous. She had no status. Because women were simply principal of men, uh, property men rather, and here she is, has no status. And they were healed. The girl was raised from the dead. The hemorrhaging woman's blood flow of 12 years stopped, and the tax collector became a part of society instead of a despised outsider. But most importantly, it gave those with faith a new relationship, a connection with their community because of their connection with Jesus. Jesus teaches can go from sin and sickness and the things that make us helpless, but if we have faith, we can tap into the power of God that can do something about these. But the power of God's presence is in mercy, not religious rituals. The most challenging of the miracles God accomplished was not really the even young girl, a hemorrhaging woman. The most difficult was to reintegrate Matthew, the tax collector, into society to bring him also into a right relationship with God. So my friends, we're in a situation we get worried and nervous and bothered, wonder how we're gonna bring folks into our faith community at a time when church attendance is dropping, we church, see churches closing, the, the, it doesn't look good when you do your straight line projections. We have, we have churches that are breaking up because they have different, different perspectives. We saw, we've seen that, of course, in the Lutheran Church, we have to be honest about it, now the Methodist Church, is, it's breaking up into two, and people are fighting, and again, when you do that, people leave, they go elsewhere. And all these things happen, we get criticized all the time. Christians get criticized all the time in the media. Especially when we say, this is what we believe, and it doesn't fit the narrative of whomever. It's okay to believe what we believe. It's okay. It's our belief. But my friends, instead of worrying about all of this, what I propose is we serve our community and we engage with human beings when and where they live. Instead of our neighbors coming to church, we should follow where they live, go to school, work, and take care of their needs. My friends, that's the beauty of the food pantry. Right now, the government is cutting back uh, payments for food significantly. I think I read something, I think half of all children uh, get food from the government. That's a sizable amount. But the government is cutting back, and now we're seeing an uptick at the food pantry because what is being given is cutting back. So we can hunker down, we can get focused. Instead of worrying about all these other things, we can say, we're going to meet people where they're at. If they're hungry, we're going to meet them in their hunger, and we're going to help them. And I can't believe the power of God and God's mercy would not respond to that. And for that, I'm thankful. So go and do and feed. <laughs>
justice flow down upon the earth. Give freedoms like to captives, let all the poor have worth. The hungry's hands are bleeding, the workers claim their rights, the mourners lust for laughter, the blinded seek for sight. Make liberty a beacon, strike down the iron power. Abolish ancient vengeance, proclaim their people's hour. For healing of the nations, for peace that will not end. For love that makes us lovers, God grant us grace to mend. We our very gifts together, knit our lives as they are spun. On your loom of time and roll us, till our thread of life is run. O oh, great weaver of a fabric, find church and world in one. Dye our texture with the radiance, by our colors with your sun. When your cities built to music, we are the storms you see. language, we are the words you speak. Our faith we find service, our hope in others' dreams, our love in hand of neighbor, our home and brightly gleams. Inscribe our with justice, your way the path untried. Your truth, the heart of stranger, your life the crucified. Now we express our faith in the words of the Apostle Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again, ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and you'll come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now, my friends, for the prayers of the church. Trusting in God's abundant mercy, let us offer our prayers for our world in need. We pray, O oh God, for the church. Unite us with any on the margins that the whole world recognizes that your mercy is greater than our human capacity to restrict it. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray, O oh God, for creation. Tend forests and fields, and safeguard all cattle, birds, and wild animals. Preserve lakes, rivers, and oceans, and send rains to water the earth. Revive lands recovering from natural disasters. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, O oh God, for the nations. Awaken our leaders' compassion for people who have too often felt forgotten or neglected, and inspire policy solutions and pro that promote equity and inclusion. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, O oh God, for all who are in need. 
accompany anyone during chronic illness, any who suffer in secret, and those grieving a loved one's death. Send healing for all who plead for mercy or relief from sickness or pain. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray, O oh God, for the eradication of racial hatred. On this week, when we commemorate the Emmanuel Nine, we implore you to cast out the demons of white supremacy that make us believe lies about ourselves and our neighbors. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Send angels of protection to provide care and compassion to those who serve in our armed forces and protect and sacrifice for us so we can be free. We pray especially for Beth and Ryan, Jonathan, Jacob, Noah, Irene, and Alex. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Healing God, raise up any who are bowed down with illness or sorrow. Deepen our care and concern for one another. We lift to you all who are undergoing transition in relationships, occupation, living situation, or health condition, especially Aaron, Ann and Bob, Bev, Dan, David, Jim, John, John, Jordan, Lawton, Lyra and family, Tim, Kristen, Pastor Joan, Dolores, Bradley and family, Bevan family, Wanda, Mary, and Pastor Roseanne. God in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We especially lift up to you, Presiding Bishop Elizabeth, our Synod Bishop Craig, and Pastor Carl. We ask that you be with their respective staffs as they live out their callings to serve. As we are called to be one, even as Jesus and the Father are one, be with the leaders in the congregation of St. Paul Lutheran Church in East Lansing and the churches in our community. God in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We give all thanks, O oh God, for Barnabas and all the saints. Renew our faith that we can do what you have promised and raise us with all our beloved dead to new life. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Receive our prayers and answer us, O oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us share God's peace, my friends. Peace. Peace with you. Peace. Now, Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins if we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The God who calls across the cosmos and speaks in the smallest seed, bless, keep, and sustain you now and to the end of age. Amen. Amen. Now for the closing hymn, I'm so glad Jesus lifted me up. There will be a women's Bible study at 11 at the church on June 14th, Wednesday, June 14th. Blessings on your week. Come for we invite you, guest and master, friend and Lord. Now as once at Cana's wedding, speak and let us hear your word. Lead us through our need or doubting. Oh,
Thanks be to God.